from Newsnet and CCTV. It's high school basketball coming to you tonight from Cadillac High School. Fourth and final quarter here at Cadillac High School as you are watching Northern Michigan High School basketball on Newsnet Sports and CCTV as the Garber Dukes trail the Cadillac Vikings 39 to 23. I'm Derek Tate alongside Dan Gussert. Fourth and final quarter as the Vikings look to stay undefeated. And we saw a big quarter and still red hot from downtown, the junior Evan Bohr. Well, I tell you what, uh, I'm sure the scout from the Essexville club coming in was don't let Klotz get the three. And boy, Evan Bohr has just shown you why you can't just focus on one on this team. Great, great start to the game here for three quarters for him. We'll see how the Vikings handle the pressure now with a little bit of lead. Seven and a little bit to go. See three or two of the starters out there for the Vikings, Cole Genema and Tip Baker. And look at Genema. Now he's got 12 points and still on double-double watch. And a great pass right there by Austin Abram. Super assist. That's a great offensive possession. You eat up 30 seconds on the clock, and you get a bunny. And speaking of bunny, on the ground is Baker who with another steal. That's his fourth of this game as the Vikings lead by 18. This has been an efficient offensive night for the Vikings who have been able to handle whatever the Dukes have thrown at them defensively. How about that hustle right there by number 14? Logan Woodruff as he gets a steal and back comes Essex. McFarland's three off the mark. Brady McLaurin snares the rebound, thinks about trying to one, run a one-man fast break, but decides to slow it down as the Vikings with an 18-point advantage. Just under seven minutes remaining. We'll see if Essexville comes out of this zone at some point. As, uh, Genema gets another big rebound underneath and puts it back in. The lead balloons up to 20. We'll see if they have to come out at some point and play some man defense here to get back in this ball game. And there's Chris Watts with a timeout as Cole Genema has been a problem on the glass all night long. 14 points, but more importantly, seven offensive rebounds for the sophomore. Absolutely, you know. And when you're Essexville, you've got to kind of pick your poisons here. You certainly see Evan Bohr out there. You can't leave him. So any shot that doesn't come up from him, you got to stay with him, and that's leaving that offside. And credit Cadillac's coaching staff to have Genema kind of in that position, crashing the glass. Well, we've seen thus far, we haven't seen a ton of Braden Swart out, who is really the only Garber Duke that has the pure size to go tit for tat with Cole Genema on the glass, but Genova's foot speed and skill for a guy his size is pretty impressive. And he's very nimble and very quick off of his feet and just a very, very intelligent player. And Genova decides, well, I got the rebound. I'm going to take it coast to coast and draws the foul, blocking foul on Essexville. And that is the double-double. He's got 14 points to go along with 10 rebounds. You know, he makes a great move right around the three-point line, just a little hesitation dribble. Swings into the middle and draws contact. That's just very, very easy to talk about, but not easy to understand when you're out on the floor. And fantastic touch right around the cup. Genema with 16 points. Dominant performance from the big man. Vikings have slipped into that uh, odd front zone right now with Evan Bohr up top. Riley Day's floater doesn't go. Two on two, fast break. Baker, crossover, up, no good. Genema with another offensive board, but is stripped by Jack Millars. Millars, one of those players that when I would play basketball, always kind of frustrated me. You go up and you get those rebounds, and when you're tall and a little lanky like myself or Mr. Genema, you just, you don't have the strength. The ball comes down low, and that's where those little guys get after it. You have those Wolverines <laughs> clawing at it down low. Couple substitutions. Noah Cochran comes in for the first time in this contest. 
Still on the floor, Tip Baker, Levi Klotz, Evan Bohr, Cole Genema. It is Evan Bohr who leads all scores with 19 points, but nipping at his heels is Cole Genema with 16. You mentioned so much earlier that they've done a good job closing out on Levi Klotz. There is... Oh, a little over, over back. back. Yeah, they've done a nice job closing on Klotz. They haven't given him much of an opportunity to look, uh, to get an open look, that is. And when he's had it, you know, he hasn't been able to punch him in tonight. And that's uh, that preparation that Essexville came into the game for. But there's just... Uh, we got some solid shooters out there for the Vikings. Millar's three-pointer doesn't go. And look at Riley Day going right at the big fella and gets that one up and in with the left hand. He has eight right now to lead Essexville in scoring. Points have been tough to come by for the Dukes. Again, we mentioned this Vikings defense has been stout heading into this contest. Now, they don't give up a lot of points. They play tough man-to-man -to -man defense. Once in a while, they'll slip into that odd front zone. They just they defend very well. They rebound very well. They communicate well. Genema's drop step does not go. 45-25, Vikings on top. Under the four-minute mark remaining in this one. Genema with the steal. And he's going to push the pace. Cochran to Klotz, great ball movement. Bohr for three. And that's like the first one he's missed all night, it feels like. Rebound Fair. by Logan Woodruff. Millars, the sophomore, gets his own miss. Goes right back up with it, doesn't get it to go. You know, he looks real solid out there. I, uh, the last offensive possession by Cadillac, he did a phenomenal job boxing out. Genema comes down here, makes two nice plays, doesn't get it to go. But he's got a good, strong game, too. Vikings. Great find. And Evan Bohr has now crossed the 20 point threshold. He's got 21. You know, that's one of the, the benefits, I guess you might say, or one of the major pluses for Coach, uh, Coach Ryan and, and the Vikings staff is. You know, it might be Genema with 21 night, might be Bohr, might be Klotz, could be Baker. You know, they've got four solid players scoring consistently around at least 10 points per game. As I look at their averages right here, Genema is averaging about 12 a game, so is Klotz. Tip Baker about 11. Evan Bohr, who after tonight's game will be right up over 10. And we haven't seen Logan Wild, who's averaging about seven a game. You see this balanced attack. They can hit you from a couple different directions. And really, heading into this game, Essexville has multiple players that can do multiple things and hurt you in a couple different ways. But the Vikings offense has been so multifaceted in this one. As there's a great inbound play and a great find. Bohr to Barcheski for his first points of the game. That's one of those things you work on probably daily in practice, how to set that screen, when to hesitate. If you're inbounding it, you don't want to be telegraphing it. The Vikings get an easy two. And Braden Swartout catches himself a mouse in the house with the big boy bucket going right at Barcheski. Don't be mentioning mouse in the house. As, uh, I've been cat sitting for three weeks for my daughter's cat. <laughs> she went home Sunday. We had a mouse in the house this morning. Cochran for three. And that's what you call a shooter's touch as he knocks it in. 52 points from the Vikings as they've nearly doubled up. The Duke says that's a nice left-handed layup. Jack Millars, the sophomore who's had a busy night. That's one of the first times this half where Essexville's been able to come off that curl and get to the basket. Vikings have done a nice job. We saw that continually in the first half just unable to finish they did a great job shutting that down here as we get to a timeout and uh Derek where are we heading where's the news net crew heading next I think the, over to the Wex here 
back-to-back this week, or not quite back-to-back, maybe a Wednesday, Friday? We got a Wednesday, Friday hockey rink special. Absolutely. Coming at you, and to be specific, it's going to be the Cadillac hockey team taking on first tomorrow, which will be Wednesday, depending on when you're tuning in and watching this broadcast. Big Rapids will be taking on the Cadillac Vikings over at the WEC Center, and then on Friday evening, 7 p.m., Cadillac will be taking on Davison. Yeah, so a Flint area school comes up Friday night. So some big week of hockey here as the Vikings start to get a little bit healthier. The flu has really hit the hockey team hard. The flu, something to deal with up here in Northern Michigan as Barczewski loses his footing. Call it travel. Yeah, I don't know if he uh, rolled an ankle a little bit on that, if he just hit a wet spot. He looks like he's fine, so uh, hopefully it was, you know, nothing that hurt him. He's got some uh, tough tough matchup down there for him right now. i got to be impressed with this sophomore, Jack Millars, who has kept attacking throughout the entirety of this game, going right at Brady McLaurin, who has called for the personal foul. Millars will go to the line to shoot a pair on the horizon. For the Garber Dukes, they will be in action on Friday evening against Freeland. Yeah, this sophomore does have a solid game to him. Uh, he's kind of a little bit physical for his size. He looked probably a little bit at Brady and said, you know what, I think I can take him to the glass, and he does, and uh, Brady picked up a foul. Final minute of this game, Cadillac Vikings are gonna stay undefeated on the season. And they will be in action, this boys team, against Swan Valley on the road this Friday as Colin Hess gets the floater to go. Nice soft touch by Colin Hess right there. And the Vikings, you said, will head to uh, play Saginaw Swan Valley next? That is correct. On Friday, as their quest for trying to stay undefeated as Millar's going at Brady McLaurin again. They're gonna call that foul on the floor, so bucket is waved off. Final 45 seconds of this contest. Nice job defensively right there. I don't know if we got a foul called or not, but I like the way Bryce Benjelink fought through the screen right there. I think if he'd have had his head turned a little bit to see the pass coming, he probably doesn't get that foul call. See Barczewski and Bryce Benjelink Checking in, and Millar's a catch and shoot three, no good. Brady McLaurin can't get in, can't quite bring in the rebound. Logan Woodruff gives an extra possession for the Dukes. Jacob Dorian, who checked in, can't get the layup to go. Evan Burrow stays with it. I think that was his third attempt just on that possession alone. He finally gets it to go. Nice job of offensive rebounding by Essexville Garber to give them 33 now for the game. Final 12 seconds. Hess picks up his dribble and he's in trouble. Poked out of bounds by Jacob Dorian. It's been a pretty, if your head coach, Ryan Benzenberg or the Cadillac Vikings, you gotta be pretty pleased with the effort. Another strong defensive ball game and I know that's one of the things he'll talk about a lot with his kids is uh, we might not shoot well all the time, but defense has got to be there. Barczewski can't quite track down the loose ball. And this will be the final possession as they'll run out the final two seconds. And Millars will hold it. And that'll do it as the Cadillac Vikings stay undefeated on the season as they improve to 8 0 by a final score of 54 to 33 over the Essexville Garber Dukes as they drop to five and five on the season. Vikings 8-0 as we're gonna have some post-game coverage here on Newsnet Sports and CCTV. We'll be right back. <laughs> 